All right, so it's about a year since I started my cockpit, and as you can see, it's still going strong, and uh, it's probably about time for an update. Uh, nothing, you know, obvious, in your face, different about it. You probably recognise this if you watched along the blog while I was building. But there are, so I mean, I have to say, <laughs> I've spent still been spending more time tinkering with this than I have flying it. So there's a lot of things, you know, little details I can tell you about. I mean, what you might notice if you watch some of my more recent videos is there's still a lot of exposed wood around under here, underneath these panels. Some new wood behind me, which you might see a little white spot over my head. That's mainly because I've put an extra monitor up here behind me. That's running off a second PC. It's not really, I'm not really using it in anger yet, but the, the idea for that is it's got Sky Vector on it at the minute, but I'm going to use Flight Sim Commander on there for flight planning and and so on. Maybe I'll say a little bit more about that in a while because um, there's more to say. Um, what else could you see? I've, I've got, you won't see this from here, but I've made some little flip down tables. I'll, I'll show you these in close up. For to put the mouse, use the mouse on. There's one on this side as well for the mouse. For this computer. There's the mini keyboard for that computer and I've also got one of those mini keyboards for, for the main PC which, which which I'm not using at the minute but I'm planning to do that imminently. I've got myself a nice cockpit light, that's a red light, uh, it's actually a white light with a pink post-it note taped over it but it works really well. I can see everything I need to, it's unobtrusive, uh, I'll leave it on for now. I should say I'm not using all the buttons that I've created. Um, you know, if you're watching my close-up, twin utter close-up videos, when I get to the end of that sequence, really I'm going to have a video that pulls it all together. And one of the things it's going to say is, if I was doing this over again, you know, I wouldn't build probably half the switches that I've done on here. All the test panel, for example. <coughs> I don't know what's going on with my voice here, sorry about this. Well, I do know what's going on with my... I've been taking antibiotics. And it's done something to my voice. Okay, down to business. I keep banging into this. What what you'll see if you look closely behind me, you notice I'm still using the Elite Yoke. Now, there's a bit of a joke going on here. Um, you know, it's a year ago, over a year ago, when I was talking about being very excited about the Iris Yoke. The Iris Yoke is still not in my cockpit because it's still not in my possession. Um, and actually, do you know... I'm, I've given up on Iris. To be honest, if that yoke ever turns up in the mail, great, and I'll try it and I'll use it. Will I keep it? Who knows? Uh, you know, they've buggered about so much, and the things, you know, it's a, it's a year late, literally, and they've done a terrible job in terms of public relations. You know, the la I, I meant to print out all the communications we'd had from Iris. I'm, a, I'm an Iris backer, by the way. You know, anybody who's got a Iris force feedback yoke. I paid for that uh, and I've seen nothing for it yet. And they've well and truly reneged on their commitment to the backers silently. You know, one of the real, this, this wouldn't be an issue if they were keeping people in the loop. But there's not been a single official update since December 2014. That's eight months ago. And, and even before that, the updates were patchy and they've done things behind the scenes. You know, it's not just that they've not kept us informed of progress, but behind the scenes they've done some very sneaky things. They've continued to manufacture yokes, and they've shipped them out to people who pre-ordered at the full price, or at uh, the then full price, the price went up and up and up. But, you know, they've jumped the queue, and they've, they've done that. You know, there's a, there's a business argument somewhere in there that makes some kind of sense up to a point, which is to ship yokes to people who've paid full price for them to keep the thing afloat but they've not they didn't tell anybody they were doing that and that said they're not even shipping those yokes very quickly uh, my, my take on this is the reason they're not telling us what's going on is that it's worse than people think uh, otherwise i can't think of any reason why they wouldn't you know this excuse that they're all busy building yokes putting them together so they're too busy to come to the forums and type a, a message or to send an email shot out. You know, it's rubbish. Anybody who's taken in by that is just an idiot, to be honest. 
I don't trust Iris. You know, I have no confidence that they'll support it or that they'll be around to support it. So I've still got the Elite Yoke. The good news is the Elite Yoke is still a fantastic yoke. It's another year on. It still works brilliantly. I would highly recommend this, although you can't buy them new anymore. They don't make them as a standalone product. They, they still sell them as part of their aviation training consoles, but you know, you need big money for those. So one of the things I said was I've used some of the switches and buttons for things that they weren't designed for. Nothing wrong with that. And in some cases I've put um, legends over the top of the um, built-in graphics using that um, the embossed tapes. And that's good actually. It makes the thing look more authentic. It's like the tapes I've used to mark up the quadrant here. I've been working on a few different software things as well, um, which I'll try and show you. I mentioned FS Commander, Flight Sim Commander, which I'm going to use on the second monitor um, for flight planning. Now, one of the problems I've encountered with um, my GPS, you'll have seen, I, I did a GPS update and I was singing the praises of the Reality XP GPS, which is what I've got in my cockpit here. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's a great um, piece of software. But, well, I say there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's, it's a faithful, it's too faithful a representation of the real thing in, in a way, which means it doesn't play very well with FSX. It uses its own database, so not all the FSX airports are in a database, that's one thing. But crucially, really, uh, particularly when I want to go to using flight plans, it can't follow an FSX flight plan. So if you design a flight plan in FSX, load it into FSX, it goes into the default GPS, but you can't use it because the Reality XP doesn't, doesn't follow that. But actually, you can make it work um, so that the Reality XP switches itself out and puts the default GPS back in control. If I just try and show you that as I'm talking, uh, it might take a bit of fiddling here, so bear with me. I'm just bringing up the RXP GPS down here. So there's the RXP GPS. There's a way to switch between the RXP GPS and the built-in one, and you do it by clicking with the right mouse button on a little click spot at the bottom of it. It's a hidden click spot, there's no button or a legend there. There's a little thing that looks like a slider or a clip or something in real life. And uh, if you right click on it and listen, you get a beep. And um, what that beep is telling you is it's switched backwards and forwards between the RXP and the internal GPS. And take it as rare, I'm not going to demonstrate this, but when it's toggled to the internal GPS, that, that GPS will follow the flight plan, but, but also the navigation functions are slaved to the internal GPS instead of the RXP, and so on. Now that's great, but it's, you know, infuriatingly, it's only half done in the sense that Everything else on the Reality XP GPS can be controlled by keyboard commands, which in turn can be mapped to buttons and switches, which means you can drive the full function, the full functionality of the GPS from the panel. But right-clicking on that click spot can't be automated. The only way you can do it, well, I'll come back to it, can't be automated. <laughs> never say never. But the only way you can do it is by clicking with the right mouse button which means you've got to use the mouse. Totally unacceptable. The whole point of building this cockpit was to do away with the keyboard and the mouse. So that's a pain in the backside. But I'm going to show you how I overcame that. In fact, I'm going to show you two different things connected to what I've just been talking about. Um, the first one is how to automate that right mouse click. So we're just showing the GPS here and I want to illustrate that. Uh, I've got the function that I've written map to a toggle switch here and what you see is something a little bit unexpected when I flip that if I turn up the volume as well now three things happened there that you might have noticed if you were watching carefully the first thing that happened was the 2D RXP GPS panel popped up in the corner here momentarily and it disappeared again second thing you might have noticed was we heard that beep and that's the beep that tells us we've switched to well, 
we can't tell just from hearing the beep. We've, we've toggled between the RXP and the default. The third thing that you will have seen a brief indication of, you may not have been able to see the detail. What I'll do is I'll switch it back to default. If you watch the virtual cockpit GPS display when I do that, you heard the beep and saw the 2D panel flash again. But we also get a message on the GPS display that says set OBS to zero degrees. Uh, if we flip it back to RXP, that message says set LBS to, well, it says 3, 4, 2 degrees, but basically it says non is some, a non-zero value. That's the only way we can tell which of the GPS units is now driving the navigation. And the message goes away after a while. Um, if it says zero, that means the reality XP is in control. If it's non-zero, it means the default. GPS is in control. So we're going to go back to RXP now. It says zero. Now the way I've done that is probably the most horrible hack imaginable and uh, it's using a pro I won't show you this, but it's a program called Key to Mouse and it's from the same place that you can buy Wideview, it's by the same author as Wideview. Luciano something, can't remember his name, he's Italian and uh, it's a little program you have to buy, it's about $30 or 30 euros or something which is quite hefty but what it does is it uh, traps mouse operations and allows you to bind them to keystrokes and the reason I'm saying it's a dirty hack is the only way that makes sense in the virtual cockpit is um, for something that's fixed in its position and never moves so we have to arrange for that Reality XP GPS 2D panel to pop up in a particular place at a particular size and then play back the mouse click that we've recorded with key to mouse and it does what we need and we can put all that in a Lua function and bind it to a, a button. I think you'll agree that's pretty much um, the worst possible way to automate something and it's the technique of last resort. It's something I've talked about before actually if you want to know more about key to mouse I, did, I think I did this in my video on the Aerosoft Demona, the H36 Demona, uh, to automate the built-in non-standard GPS. So you might want to look back at that video as well. And the other thing I've done is the natural companion to that ability to use the built-in GPS to drive navigation and to swap between it and the RXP. And that is, I want to be able to manipulate either of those GPS's, that's the Reality XP one or the one in the virtual cockpit, in the Twin Otter in other words using my hardware panel. Um, now you can't, you can't manipulate them both at the same time I mean in principle you can almost do that but because they're not duplicates the, the functions don't quite, they're not quite in step so um, that doesn't work very well. So basically what I've done is I've got another switch on my panel that just flips backwards and forwards between controlling either of the two GPS's and that's just done in the Lua code inside the GPS functions uh, and I've, this is one of the switches I've repurposed down here, it's the Pito static backup switch so if I flip that backwards and forwards, I mean you may not see this at that distance but if you watch up here near the track IR sensor there's a a little window comes up because there's no indication in the cockpit so I've had to make an indication so a little window says GPS panel drives and it says RXP or default so that was easy to do so I think that's pretty much it you know not too much more to say for now I mean, we've got plenty to say but not strictly about the Twin Otter I'm looking at other ideas all the time you know thinking about cockpit plus one if you like. Um, I have got a new pair of rudder pedals, I've just got those yesterday in fact. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to work out. It's a very good set of rudder pedals, they're made by Flightlink, they're actually anti-torque pedals intended for a helicopter so there's no brakes on them. They're a little bit old and used and also they got m mangled a bit in the mail. <laughs> um, now that worked in my favour because um, I negotiated with the guy who sent them and uh, we've come to some arrangements. I've got them fairly cheap, but I'm going to have to do some work to sort them out. 
Um, they're hydraulically damped. Now that's good and bad. Good because the feel is great. I've tried them out briefly. I'm going to have to anchor my chair somehow because um, the resistance is so much different to the Cytec pedals. I just whiz backwards and the rudder doesn't move. Uh, the bad, the downside of the hydraulic damping is because these things are so old and used, they're leaking. You know, the the seals on the pistons are probably need to be replaced. It's not catastrophically bad at the moment, but it's going to lose oil clearly over time. But we'll see. Anyway, uh, that's to come. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'll do about the brakes. I've got a few ideas about that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so that's it. Uh, the state of the Twin Otter Extended cockpit. Maybe there'll be more to say as we go.